creepy people crushing on you well after you're married is one thing, but for them to take shirtless photos of you later on in life and you be okay with it is just another weird thing to me. G'day there guys, it's your main man Marky and welcome back to another episode of r slash am I the a-hole. Now if you love today's bloody good content, I want you to smack that like button, especially if you let it take shirtless photos of you. I feel like that's really weird, but um, you should sit back, relax, chuck a prawn on the barbie, and get ready for some more bloody good content. Let's go. Posted by user HoneyPuzzleHeaded173, titled, Am I the a-hole for taking portrait photos of my crush, who is married? So I have a very good friend who is married, and I'm in love with him. But I've never done or said anything inappropriate, nor has he. I keep my feelings to myself. Now during the past year, I invested in a high quality camera, and I've been trying to develop my skills. The only thing I do is take portraits. That's what I'm interested in. I've taken portraits of many of my friends, and I post many of them online when I'm given permission. I recently asked my crush if he would like a portrait session. He agreed, and his wife was perfectly well aware of it. He has seen my portraits and gave it the okay. The portrait session took place outdoors in public. He had his shirt off for some of the photos, but remained fully clothed besides that. The majority of the photos are shoulder up, including the ones with his shirt off. Almost all the portraits I've taken in the past involve some shirtlessness, both men and women. The photos are beautiful, and he's unbelievably beautiful in them. After I was done with post-processing, I showed him the photos and asked if I could post a few, and he agreed. When I posted the photos, there was a bit of a furor. He's not considered a conventionally attractive man by most of our friends, so I think they were very surprised to see my photos. I received a lot of DMs asking me if something was going on between me and him, saying things like sexual tension was palpable. To be clear, I don't appear in these photos at all. I never touched him at any time, never made any inappropriate comments to him, never even complimented him. I just took the photos and gave him some suggestions for direction, and that was it. When his wife did see the photos, she hit the roof and basically told me that I'm an a-hole for taking these photos of him. Again, we're talking about basically three photos that are shoulders up and one shirtless photo that's torso up, but that's not even the one she's talking about. Am I the a-hole? Literally all I did was take photos and edit them. And P.S. He himself loves the photos and posted one of them himself. The way you're presenting it, I don't understand why everyone's so angry at you. I guess shirtless photos of someone that you're crushing on is really bad? But you say all these reactions happen and it's just a few photos that were a bit sexy. Everyone posts photos that are sexy every day on Instagram, I see them. I double tap them, I like sexy photos. Crucify me. But you, you are leaving something out of this story, I don't believe you. For everyone to come and attack you like that, and then the wife to blow up. You have left something out of this story, and I don't trust you. This isn't normal. I never see sexy photos and immediately get the urge to go and tell that person, hey, what is going on? There's a lot of sexual tension that's palpable here. So, because I feel like you're lying to us, I'm gonna go with you're the a-hole. Now in the comments, Thrill Doctor one says, oh honey, you are so the a-hole here. You're not a very good friend if you're crushing on and taking pictures of her husband. You're the a-hole. Destroy the pictures and stay away from that couple forever. You're the a-hole. You should stay away from this man forever, even if he's a friend. He's married, and you may think you're hiding your feelings from him and his wife, but at some point, one of them will figure it out. This also isn't good for you. Somehow I doubt shirtless portraits are common for OP to do, and if friends regularly see the portraits, they are going to notice immediately that something's different as a result. The fact that her friends could immediately tell that there were some hidden feelings just by seeing the photos shows that something just isn't adding up. If they were just like the portraits she took of other people, why would these ones stand out so much, even without context? Yeah, exactly. I think it's also telling that the wife was cool with the photo shoot until she saw the photos. Obviously there's something different here that tipped off both the friends and the wife. I agree. Something is missing from this story. 
You're the a-hole. This seems shady. Taking the pictures isn't shady, but involving yourself in the life of a man who's married and you're in love with is never a good idea. To me, it seems like you're trying to create a situation where something happens between the two of you. That's just major sketch. Seems shady? You're giving it way too much credit by adding the seems part of it. This is beyond creepy and shady. And even if he's oblivious to OP's feelings and nothing ever happens, it's not good for OP's emotional health to be torturing herself by thinking that being close to him will be enough to sustain her instead of removing herself from his presence and working on closing the door on those feelings so that someday she could be ready to be with someone who is absolutely crazy about OP and reciprocates her feelings. And Breadcrumb Forest says, You're the a-hole. Ew. You're like the female version of a nice guy. You're not really a good friend at all. Stop referring to him as your crush. You're not in high school anymore, and I guarantee that others in your friend group are aware of your feelings, which is just icky, as he's married. You need to distance yourself from him until you can find a way to get over him, not invite him over for a private, intimate portrait session. What the hell? Agreed. I'd love to hear what the friend group is saying. This comes off as super desperate and cloying. Gross. Our next post is by user, The Truth Hurts Donut, titled, Am I the a-hole for telling my son's friend the truth about why his mum doesn't want him playing with my son? So my son and his friend are both in the second grade. We moved into the area in the middle of the pandemic, and my son quickly made friends with a boy in the neighbourhood. For the first couple months it was fine. They got along perfectly. I put the house in order and was able to work from home, so childcare wasn't an issue. The problem was when my husband got back from his deployment. He was the one to pick my son and his friend up from school that day. My son insisted, because he wanted to show off his other dad, the Marine. My husband was also the one who answered the door when friend's mother arrived. She was perfectly cordial, and then left with friend in tow. The next Monday, my son comes home looking forlorn, and when I ask him what's wrong, he tells me his friend's mother doesn't want friend to play with my son anymore. I ask her what the issue is and she says that she just doesn't want her son to get the idea that our lifestyle is an acceptable one, and that she doesn't want him to get confused with homosexual ideology. Lo and behold, a couple days later, friend comes up to me and asks me why she doesn't want him to play with my son, and I tell him, your mum doesn't like the fact that me and Curtis's, not real name, other dad, are two men who are married and are in love. He asks why that is, and I say, because she's prejudiced. Later that night, I get an angry call from friend's mum demanding to know why I called her a bigot to her own son, why I'm pushing my ideology on him, telling me that I'm an influence that will push friend away from God, etc. She posts this long screed on the Parents of Generic Suburban Atlanta Elementary School Facebook group about how we should solve disputes among the parents and not drag the kids into it. I replied on the group asking what I was supposed to do. Lie to her son? She claims that by calling her prejudiced, I was disrespecting her religious beliefs and then went into this whole screed about her First Amendment rights. I told her not to make her prejudice my effing problem, and sure as crap, don't make it my son's problem. Then the admin for the Facebook group took down the post because the other parents were piling on on both sides, and it was getting heated. Am I the a-hole? OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the a-hole. I might have crossed the line by calling her beliefs prejudiced. I could have told him to ask his mother why she didn't want him and my sons playing together. I guess you could have done that, but the inner petty me always wants to tell the kid, hey, your parents just suck. You'll learn this later in life if you don't, you know, fall for their ideology. That's absolutely not a socially acceptable answer by any means, and I I accept that. I stand by what OP said here. It caused some drama, but, you know, it's not like it's the end of the world. She couldn't find an acceptable retort to his because she's prejudiced argument. All she could say to that is, why did you say that I'm a bigot? Doesn't explain why she's not a bigot. Also, you're pushing your ideology on my son. 
doesn't explain how he's pushing that ideology. Apparently just being gay and married to a man is all you need to push ideologies these days. And then, your influence will push the friend away from God. As if that means anything in this situation. She's just mad that she's not able to indoctrinate him from an early age with you giving him a logical other side of the argument. And that's completely acceptable in my opinion. Call it out when you see it. Not the a-hole OP. Continue doing this and save your son's friendship. Now in the comments, interesting issue 475 says, Not the a-hole. She's planting the seed of homophobia in her child's mind, and you called her out on it. Good for you. Her poor child. I know. They lost a friend due to their mum's backwards views, and they probably are going to have said views shoved down their throats. It'll be even worse if the friend ends up being in the LGBT plus spectrum. Not the a-hole. You told the truth, and I feel bad for that poor kid though. Hopefully you gave him a fighting chance to learn not to be a homophobe one day. This, remind homophobic mum that lying is a sin and pushes her away from God. Be merciful, just as your father is merciful. Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Luke 6-37 I hate how there are so many Christians who promote hate and bigotry over the love and acceptance their God is supposed to be about. One of the Ten Commandments even is, love thy neighbor as thyself. But reminding those who practice Christianity about the why and how they are being bad Christians has never worked for me in the past. There seems to be two types of people the ones who practice the love and acceptance of their lord and religion, and those who practice the judgment and condemnation of their religion. Sorry for the rant, I just hate the hypocrisy. And not the a-hole. Though I'm disappointed there were parents taking her side after that repugnant post. And OP replies, The joys of moving to the deep south, even if it is suburban Atlanta. We moved because my mother-in-law had a pretty nasty fall, and my husband wanted to be nearer to her. Wow. As part of a gay couple living in suburban Atlanta, I've yet to encounter this kind of nastiness. Always found it pretty damn welcoming, as I moved from the UK five years ago. Hoping against hope that our kiddos don't end up dealing with this when they're school age. Not the a-hole, and sorry you had to deal with this. There are a ton of us gays around Atlanta. These idiot homophobes are going to find themselves in more and more of a minority very soon. And our next post is by user BoringBench1542, titled, Am I the a-hole for crying because our bed was wet? So I, female 35, and my husband, male 36, were sleeping last night. My husband has a bad sweating problem, and sometimes the bed is soaking wet, but it's never affected me until last night, I woke up at 2am with my pillow and covers soaking wet. I was tired and started crying because everything was wet and I wanted to sleep. My husband got really angry, turned the light on, and started yelling at me, saying, are the pills making you extra sensitive? What the hell? This is no reason to cry. And then went back to bed. I had to sleep with the wet crap all night, and yeah, I was crying. I basically cried myself to sleep. My husband insists that I was a baby and that it was ridiculous. He didn't apologize once or even tried to find a solution. Instead, he screams at me saying I'm a child and ridiculous. I don't think I was doing anything wrong, but am I the a-hole for crying? Now this is a very special post because we get the other side of the argument. Oh my god. In the comments, we have this beautiful gem. So, I'm the husband in this story. My wife wanted me to read this post to prove that she was correct in our private, now public, dispute. Pretty much like most of these posts, they're all written from one person's side and written in their most favourable light. One thing my wife opted to leave out was that she did not simply just wake up and start crying, she woke up and started screaming and yelling at me, which then moved into a crying tantrum. This was a 2am surprise offensive assault, not a meek crying over a situation. At 2am, nobody is at the cognitive best, and for me, we just needed to correct the problem and get back to sleep since I wake up for work in three hours. So I started looking to change the sheets out, but she didn't like my first option as it was a dirty sheet. 
but I was given no other opportunity because all she clearly wanted to do at that time was to scream and yell at me. There was no open dialogue from her side. The situation was going nowhere. She was being completely irrational and closed off to anything other than her screaming and yelling at me. So yes, at 2am, I snapped and yelled at her and stated that it was most likely the new pills that she just started taking, that had a long list of bad side effects, one of them being hyper-emotional. So I gave up and went back to bed since nothing constructive was happening. After everything that transpired, she went back to bed in the wet sheets to cry herself to sleep. She didn't take a single action to make her side of the bed dry and wouldn't let me take any actions either. How can a rational person wake up, start screaming and crying at her husband over wet sheets, then so readily go back to sleep in them? That's why I believe the medication was affecting her. As for me, yes, I do suffer from night sweats, but it's far worse when a fan is blowing directly on me. I've had this issue my whole life, so it's not some recent infection. Since my wife and I have been struggling to get pregnant, we have both gone through a gambit of medical tests, and all of our tests have come back negative in every department. No infections, STIs, no other ailments. We're two healthy people. I run hot, and my wife likes to joke that I'm her heater in the bed, and I think most couples have a similar relationship, where the woman is generally cold, and the man warms them up. But I run really hot. So much so that we discovered when we first started sleeping in the same bed, we could not be under the same covers, otherwise we both feel like we're in a sauna. So we actually sleep under different blankets in the same bed. With that said, the weather is changing, we haven't taken the plastic down from our window, so our room over the past few nights has been really hot. So last night, we turned our white noise fan around and pointed it on us. I would take the time to try and understand a situation rather than just immediately call me an abusive husband, stress, depression, frustration, medication, isolation from the pandemic, the fact that since I work from home, we've been together 24-7 for three years straight with literally no real time apart. I'm not joking. The amount of time we've been apart can be measured in hours on two hands has contributed to a very basic simple issue we normally resolve quickly and internally exploding into an online post to be viewed publicly by everyone. As she mentioned at the start of her post, my sweats have never affected her before. Last night was the first time. So all of a sudden, this topic explodes into this. Alright, so I'm gonna put my judgement out there and say, OP, you're the a-hole for misleading us. You didn't give us any story. This was so bare bones and basic. And the fact that you haven't had a problem before this, and then you made absolutely no, no attempt, no nothing to fix the situation. All you wanted to do was scream and cry at him. And I understand you're taking a new medication. You're extra sensitive. That's okay, but that's no excuse to go and try and flame your husband the day after to the public. I get that you're embarrassed about your actions. I would be embarrassed too if I did the same thing as you. And if I was taking medication like you, I can absolutely see myself doing something like this. But you have to be the bigger man in this situation. You have to realize that what you were doing was wrong. You have to apologize and say, I was acting irrational. It's the medication. I will try not to do it again. I'm not used to this new medication. I am so sorry. You achieve nothing by continuing to die on the hill that you're on and taking it out on your husband. Yes, husband has a bad sweating problem, but it's never affected you before. If he's got a heart issue that he hasn't checked out, he might want to go check that out and see if there is anything that can be done to stop this sweating problem. But some people are just freaking furnaces and it, it, it baffles scientists to know that they can just be molten core red hot constantly. Like, goddamn, how are you getting so hot? Where is this heat coming from? Slow that metabolism down or something. Who needs a gym when you're burning that goddamn red hot? It's just, fat's just peeling off your body at that point, I imagine. So yeah, rant done. I'm gonna go with you're the a-hole for this one. Stop being so goddamn misleading. Now in the comments, Copper Anode says, Edit, everyone sucks here. Okay, assuming that the husband's comment is legit from the husband, you both need to step back for a second. Dude, I still think you should see a cardiologist just to be safe. 
Lady, did you wake up and scream at 2am, then refuse to let him change the sheets? If so, you need to get a grip. Me seeing the title in r slash am I the a-hole filtered? How could the top comment be everyone sucks here when all OP did was cry? Me seeing the actual thread? Oh. This is grade A r slash are the straights okay content. I mean, do you guys even like each other? Edit. In light of the husband's response, it's you're the a-hole slash everyone sucks here. Definitely you're the a-hole for such a misleading post. Get some counselling and separate beds. And if that doesn't work, get a divorce. I'm sorry, but what the hell? You're a grown-ass woman. You sat in bed and cried. Instead of trying to find a solution yourself, you cried yourself to sleep. Your husband sounds like he has a medical condition, but goddamn. Sleep in another bed until he resolves it. Based on your husband's response, assuming it's actually him, you're the a-hole. You left out the part where you woke him up by screaming and swearing at him and not letting him change out the sheets. That's a tad different from just crying. If you're having a difficult time of sleeping in the same bed with him, then perhaps it's time to sleep in separate rooms or go 50s TV show style and sleep in two twin beds. Alright guys, that's the end of the video. Friendly reminder that I'm now posting daily on my second channel, Marky2. If you want to laugh at memes with me, link is down in the description below. On phone, you just click that little arrow underneath the video. I also want to say thank you to all my channel members and Patreon subscribers. Your names are currently floating down the screen here, and I love to see all of you guys. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Thank you for supporting me. I really appreciate it. If you see yourself on screen, I want you to give yourself a big pat on the back for being amazing as always, and thank you for supporting me again. I do hope that you guys have a good day, night, sleep, whatever it is you're up to. Um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.